Here we go, we got a battle going. It's gonna be CD versus CD. And then towards the end, we're gonna break it down and who stands alone. Right now, we're gonna start off with uh, a couple of my favorites Rage Against Machines first, and Ozzy's first, Blizzard versus Rage. I don't know, it's a tough one. You got Randy and you got Rage. Hmm, I'd have to go with Ozzy. I grew up with this shit. This shit is still going strong. Not saying that Rage isn't, but I'm sure even Tom Morello would agree that this is the better album. I gotta go with this one. So Rage is the loser and Ozzy's the winner. Cheap Trick at Budokan in 1984. Um, uh, shit, this was like the end of, uh, it's the last album with Roth. Had Jump. Kind of like the end of Halen as far as I'm concerned. I mean, there's still some great songs on here, you know, Drop Dead Legs, House of Pain, Girl Gone Bad, but Cheap Trick at Budokan. That's all I have to say. Cheap fucking trick at Budokan. Ooh, here we go. Motley Crue and Megadeth. Fuck. You know what? I have, it, have to give it to the crew, man. Have to give it to the fucking crew. Because this album was like the album that did it for him. Megadeth, as far as I'm concerned, didn't really show their true potential till Rust in Peace. They were still, I mean, there were some great songs in here, don't get me wrong. Some great songs, but gotta give it a shout at the devil. I mean, the beginning is so, is so fucking evil. That intro before shout at the devil. Oh shit, wow, this is a tough one. Ride the Lightning and Vulgar. You know what? I love old fucking Metallica, but when this album came out, it it took this shit to another level. I mean, this was like heavy, but then the another a new fucking level, man. This is what it was all about. You know, Metallica was already getting weak at this point. '92, they did the did the Black album, and you know, I mean, it was all right. Had Holder Than Now was a great song, sad but true, but. They were a different band. They didn't have the fucking raw energy and just the sweat out balls and the nuts, you know, and the fucking going crazy. They kind of mellowed out and Pantera took it up. They took the torch. They took the fucking torch, so I gotta give it to Pantera on this one. Nothing shocking and electric. Fuck, man. We, we need like a tiebreaker going because I dig both albums very much. I mean, this has Ocean Size, Standing in the Shower Thinking, fucking Summertime Rolls. Of course, Mountain Song was the hit. Uh, you know, within the cult, you know. Electric. Fucking Wildflower Peace Dog. You know, Little Devil. And then Love Removal Machine was the hit, you know. But, I mean, as much as I love the cult, this album, I think, was more fucking of an impact. You know, Jane's Addiction, fucking... You know, then the next album, Ritual Deal Habitual, just turned them into a fucking uh, unbelievable band. So I gotta go with Jane's on this one. Uh, Stone Temple Pilots, Core, and Nirvana Nevermind. A lot of people are gonna hate me for this, but Stone Temple Pilots. I gotta go with Stone Temple Pilots. I think they were more of a heavier fucking band. They were more, uh, we got this going, I like that, you know. A lot of people are gonna fucking trip on this, but I think Nirvana was so fucking overrated. I mean, what was so great that Kurt Cobain did? What, he wrote a song called Smells Like Teen Spirit? A deodorant already took that name. You know, Stone Temple Pilots were fucking raw, they were heavy. The guitar player was fucking heavy. He was, you know, definitely a better guitar player than Kurt Cobain. Dave Grohl's a great drummer, but so was the guy from Stone Temple Pilots. Kurt Cobain's singing was horrible. Scott Wilde was a better singer. I gotta go Stone Temple Pilots. Gotta go Stone Temple Pilots. Here we go. Two for you folks out there. Not peace. Fuck peace. No, peace. Still gotta love peace. We go round two, Battle of the Bands. So we got The Crew. And we got STP. You know, Motley Crue, 
shit. I mean, they were the fucking most dangerous, baddest band out. You know, I mean, they made a lot of noise. They made, you know, they fucking, they stomped their way through the country. I mean, it was like Godzilla. They fucking pillaged the fucking place. You know, STP, you know. Scott Wine was into heroin. I don't know if too much into this time, but I'm not saying you gotta be into fucking heroin or do drugs to be, but musically speaking, I'd give it a Stone Temple Pilots, but as far as just like leaving their mark, you know, made a stain. I think Nikki Six said that once. If it was Molly Crew, I'd have it, you know, as much as I love Stone Temple Pilots, I have to give it to the crew. Oh, uh, these two are bad. Okay, here we go. Jane's Addiction and Cheap Trick. It's a hard decision because I love both albums, but uh, sentimental, I have to go with Cheap Trick at Budokan. I remember getting this album when I was 10 years old, 1979. First came out for fucking Christmas. Played this record till the fucking album was just the groove for fucking gone. You know, I mean, I didn't get into Jane's until... Actually, I wasn't even into Jane's when this album first came out. It wasn't until Ritual Dilo Habitual. And I saw the video for Stop, and I was like, holy shit. You know? Love this album, but, you know, there's got to be a loser. No fucking mercy. There's no quarter in this show, so Jane's is out. Got to go to Cheap Trick. Okay, now the final matchup. It's a tough one, man. This is, this is like fucking Ollie versus Frazier. One. I mean, Jesus Christ, it doesn't get any better than this. Vulgar and Blizzard. Dimebag's hero, Randy Rhodes. I mean, it's tough for me to decide, but... I mean, Blizzard of Oz. I mean, every tune on here is a killer. It's fucking the introduction to the world. Randy Rhodes. It doesn't get any better than that. But then again, you got Vulgar. This fucking hit you like the cover did. Right? I mean, everybody that listened to this got pumped. I mean, it, it like, this album ran into your bloodstream. It changed the way you fucking, like, felt. I mean, you got so amped up when you heard this. And they, you know, like I was saying earlier, they, they took the torch. Metallica was dying, and they had to start fucking going. And I saw this tour at the Hollywood Palladium with White Zombie. And, you know, this, this I never saw Randy Rhodes, never saw Randy Rhodes. I don't know if I should keep doing this, but, you know, just let people, you know, see the covers. Even though this actually ain't, I mean, look how small the Blizzard of Oscar was trying to get a, should have brought the vinyl. This is the remastered one. There's, you know, there's Suicide Solution, Revelation Mother Earth, Mr. Crowley, Goodbye to Romance. I don't know, still great. Crazy Train, I'm burned out on. This is a tough one, you know. Rhodes was Dimebag's hero. And I'm sure he's probably looking, you know, Mike, you better pick Randy for me, you know. I don't know, I mean, when I first heard Randy Rhodes, I was blown away, but when I first heard Dimebag, I was fucking floored. Both of them were fucking unbelievable, but I gotta go with Vulgar. Vulgar's the winner. The Kings. <laughs>